Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Laura with Diamond Painting and Stitching with Laura. And today is my May Sania Day 11. What a day. Today, just so you know, we're going to be working on his eyes on the sparrow. And we're going to be working on the lettering that's going across here today. Oh, yeah, it's been a heck of a day, let me tell you. I mean to tell you. So, I get up and I found out that my, um, what do you call it? My Instapot was here. So, I go off to the, what do you call it, off to the post office. And, of course, the stuff from 123 Stitch, which was actually supposed to show up today, it wasn't in the the thing yet so yeah so I came back home and I waited and I waited and I waited and I checked and I waited and I waited and I checked yeah this went on until about quarter to three so finally I had enough and I decided I'm just gonna go so finally I went and I got that and I did a video for opening oh yeah did that then I got off of that video and straightened out all the thread so it would go with the two patterns <sighs> of course I was short like four colors for some reason or I'd substituted and didn't tell myself so hang on I gotta count one two three four eight nine so yeah Seems like a long way away. I'll try to get that green out of there. So, yeah. It, it's, yeah. So, then I had to go tearing off again. That's the third time trip I've made to the, to town today. And didn't um, even go to the grocery store. But I really didn't need to go to the grocery store. Yeah. That was like the least of my worries. So, went to the, now it's like quarter to four, and I thought, oh God, please let that guy, please, please, please let that guy be open. So, he still was. He was open till four. <sighs> and then I came back. And here we are. Yeah. It's been special. And it's raining out there. Just now started raining harder. It was raining a little bit harder this morning, but... Nothing too exciting. But to while away my hours, I spent time on YouTube trying to figure out how to use this stupid Instapot. And, you know, with what I had planned. Oh, yeah. Crap. So, yeah, it's been an interesting day. Oh, of course not. I tell you. It's probably got too much going on in the back of this thing. Now I'm going to break the needle. So, yeah, I, I stitched a little bit. I was working on uh, Seeking Refuge today. A little bit get some of it done because I really didn't feel like counting too much and there's a lot of big space there I'm working on the house at, right now but doesn't have you know a whole lot of color changes and all that I just couldn't deal with it today so yeah but I got my stuff in and I'm happy and I got two new well, 13 new projects to do, if you count it that way. I got the perennial rounds. And uh, there's 12 of them. And what else did I get? Oh, I got another sampler. So, yeah, I have plenty to do. That big O. 
but I guess it's on this is 14 count so it just looks bigger so that's about all I've been working on all day long I tried to stitch while I was waiting for the post office to get their act together I'm telling you I hate that post office just absolutely despise having to order something online and it takes forever at this point so yeah it's special <sighs> I'm kind of wore out but I am not taking a nap yesterday I took a three hour nap and didn't go to bed until three o'clock in the morning so we're just gonna try to tough it out today and I don't know that I did or I didn't learn how to use my, what do you call it, my Instapot. So that's going to have to wait. I took out a pork roast. I thought maybe I could throw all this stuff together to make some cooked pork for my, uh, oh, what is it, for my green chili. I can't, see, I can't even think today. Just cannot think. Oh, I got my, my new little scissors nearby. They're nice and lightweight. They look like they'd be heavier, but they're not. They're called butterfly. I don't know why it looks... I guess it looks like a butterfly, but, you know, you have to convince me of that. Oh, jeez. So I haven't used them yet. Just got them. Oh, goodness gracious. Let me pull the light over here where we can see what the heck we're doing. That, that my day was consumed. Too bad I didn't have a plan for today. It probably would have gone better, but it didn't. So it is what it is, and I haven't finished watching uh, the rest of Grey's Anatomy for this season. Let me look. One, two, three. Yeah, okay. I'm down. I've got about two more episodes to go through, and then I'll be done with that. So we'll see what happens there. Whoops. I gotta do this one backwards. My bad. I love when I sew hair into it. You know, it really personalizes it. Molly's hair, my hair. They did it. What do you call it? A test. A DNA test. That's where it was going. They had to find out all kinds of crap. Maybe it'll be in a, a frame somewhere and somebody will pick it up in a, a newfangled kind of thrift store. 100 years from now and wonder what the heck was that all about yeah we can only hope I don't think mine are put in a frame quality I mean and worry about it being museum quality but uh, I watched um I don't remember it was something to do with the BBC I want to say BBC history one time and they were taking um it was like a, a sewn piece that was done on silk somewhere in china i believe either i think it was china and uh it was just gorgeous and they were cleaning it and they had to take the whole back off and you know replace all the linen behind it and oh my goodness yeah, then people really know what they're doing. I guess they better, you know, for what they take apart. But I don't know. But it was kind of interesting to watch them and in, in all the process of how they did it. And then they rehung, you know, they cleaned it. They redid the backing and they fixed some of the holes and blah, you know, just just restored it completely. You know, it seemed like. It was just gorgeous, just absolutely gorgeous. And the people had, I guess, you know, back way back, we're talking about 
twelve hundreds, fourteen, fifteen hundreds, whatever it was, sixteen hundreds. They didn't have TV. They didn't have internet, you know, so they had nothing else better to do with their time. And some people were rich, so they really didn't have anything to do with their time. So they could sit and sew, and maybe a group of ladies sat and sewed, you know, on these things. They were just absolutely stunning. And you just think of all the time that it took to do that, you know. It's just, oh, it boggles the, my mind. But it don't take much to boggle my mind. But you know what I mean? It, it, I don't know. And then they were s sewing on silk. Oh, somebody told me what that was. Silk fabric, you know, and it makes it just stunning. Just absolutely stunning. I will never hit that grade, you know. And they told me that was like a master class, that they had to be master stitchers to stitch on that kind of stuff. And just, I love the arts and through the years and uh, what it looks like. Boy, that's a big word for two letters. Jeez, they kind of strung that out. Maybe she had to string it out a little bit to get it all fit. But, you know, I mean, the pottery is... It's just magnificent, and there's still places in Japan and China that still do, we'll call it traditional pottery and and that kind of thing. Of course, they make the stuff for the tourists, but, you know, why wouldn't they? But there are still master potters and stuff, you know, that have gone down through age and time. You know, got to figure out what's going on over here. That's what I thought. All right. Of course, it's right up next to the edge but um, you know it's just amazing that it's been passed down through the family and you know that was probably their family business you know but that there are still like seven eight hundred years later there's still people that work on that stuff and do that kind of thing the most fascinating one though of all was when they um redid it was part of the the Forbidden City in China, and it was someone's summer home. I believe the first emperor's summer home. And they redid, whoa, there was like bamboo work on the walls and metal work, and I, I don't remember if there was stone work, but I know that there were um, like murals that had been painted by somebody famous. I have no idea. You know, and it was just, it just boggles the mind. But, I mean, the best part of that was they had to have some kind of backing. And it was made from mulberry bark to put on the back of this these murals. That they were, this mural was on, like, the ceiling and part of the walls and stuff. So they had to have a mulberry backing, tree backing, paper made out of mulberry bark or something. I... <sighs> Yeah, well, there was still a guy in one part of China whose family had done that for generation upon generation, et cetera, et cetera. His family did the original backing for those murals. I mean, it's like, oh, my God. And he was still doing that kind of work, and, oh, it's just unbelievable. <coughs> and it just... Just un, un, unfathomable. You know, it, it just, it gets to me. I love it. I found it fascinating. Totally fast. I could just sit there for hours and listen to him. And I watch, watch another guy, and his name of his channel, we'll call it that, on YouTube is Bum Gardeners. And he is a restorer of paintings. He'll clean them. He'll take them out of the frame. He'll redo the edges, blah, blah, blah. I mean, the whole thing start to finish. Oh, it's just, it's just amazing how dirty, you know, some of the, I got to get another, some of the uh, paintings are, you know, over time. And some of them were quite old, you know, and you'd have to fill in with stuff and yeah, it's just, it's crazy. But these people are so good at their job. It's just of course, compared to me, they'd look trip the light fantastic. You know what I mean? Because I have no clue. But 
it's just fascinating. I had to get my other page out. Um, fascinating to see, you know, watch them do that. Nine again. So, yeah, if you have nothing else better to watch. Six. Ah, nine. It's fascinating if you look up restoration, just how they they do things and and what it looks like afterwards. I mean, it looks like a brand new painting. Most of them, you know, it's just, it boggles my brain. And But no, I, I, I don't think that that would be something that I would care to, you know, get into. My mother used to read. She redid furniture, you know, sometimes on pieces that were antiques and stuff and that had been painted 90 layers. Oh, crap. Of course. Let's. There we go. I had a little tiny knot and I couldn't get that sucker out for nothing. But, uh, no, I, I have no. That stuff stinks. I remember from experience and she'd do it out in the garage and in the summer and in uh, Illinois and I don't know how she got it done but you know it it was just mind-boggling mind-boggling but uh, yeah the things people do and you know it doesn't appeal to everybody you know it doesn't have to I just watch Enjoy watching the process almost as much as I like watching um, <coughs> people turn wood on a wood lathe. I don't really want to have to do that again. But it's interesting how they can manipulate the wood and cut away layers and and do stuff. And they do so much stuff now with, with resin that, uh, you know, it, it, it's beautiful. I just, and I love woodworking and like that, you know, I could sit there and one night I, I watch for like four or five hours, somebody turning wood and making different things out of them. It, it's just fascinating, but I'm just not that coordinated and I don't want to get into it again because it went down that road. I mean, it was fine, but, uh, you know. The ex at the time only knew so much, but I understand that, you know, you only get taught so much. And then if you're not around it all the time, you know, it's different. Let's see if I can just mirror this. What do you think? Do you think my chances are good? It's a huge T. So, yeah, I, I like watching different videos. I like watching them go to abandoned places, for heaven's sakes. And it just makes me want to weep. I just cry, you know, at what people left behind and the antiques that are just rotting out there. It's just, it, I have a passion for antiques and when I see something and I can afford it, well, I get it. But, uh, yeah. Just unbelievable stuff. My mother collected antiques too, you know. So we always had antiques at the house. Oh gosh, I hope that's the way that's supposed to look. Uh, yep, and yep, and yep. Okay, yeah. We've got two more stitches. Hey, we got the O, the N, and a T done. Wow, we are just flying today. And then I'm going to have to think about something about dinner. I've been running around so much, I don't even think I ate. Today I had a, a bite of a Pop-Tart, and that was about it. I got leftover steak, because I cooked my steak last night. And is that the way that is supposed to look? Hang on, guys, sorry. Um, I had prime rib and I cooked it, so I have it left over. And I bought a uh, 
what do you call it? A dragon fruit? I'd never had dragon fruit. And I cut it up into pieces, and it was kind of tasteless, so I added a little sugar to it. Then I realized I'd bought strawberries, so I cut the strawberries up and added a tiny bit more sugar to it all and stirred it all up and made a great salad. So, I don't know what we're going to do with the rest of that steak tonight, but hey, we'll have to wait and see. All right. Well, it's coming, guys. We got his eye is on and the, and we're getting ready to do Sparrow. It's right there. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And please hit the bell, and that way you'll know when my next video comes out. Y'all have a good rest of your day, and stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. Bye-bye. Wash your hands.